In this tutorial, we will develop a header view for the card component. As you see on the screen, there are three easily distinguished elements that this header has. Let's talk about it a little bit. While a huge bold text grabs your attention in the top part, then there is a custom-made button right beside it. At the bottom of this header, you can also notice a subheader with some text. It's pretty easy to develop such a layout design in the SwiftUI framework, so without further ado, let's launch Xcode and deep dive into coding. Header Title First of all, please open the card view file. After that, go ahead and embed the second ZStack container into a new vertical stack container, as I show you. This VStack container allows arranging any subviews in a vertical line to each other. Cool. Let's move on by declaring all the major sections of this card with some comments. Enter the following code inside the vertical stack container. Mark. Comma. Dash. Header. Mark. Comma. Dash. Main content. After that, scroll down a little bit and enter this code. Mark. Comma. Dash. Footer. Super. Now, we can return to the header section and start developing it. Let's start with creating a large header text. Enter this code. Text. Hiking. Font weight. Black. Font. System. Size. 52. With this code, we created a large title for the card. Now let's add some styling to it. Add this new modifier to the text view. Foreground style. Linear gradient. Colors. Custom, gray, light. Custom, gray, medium. Start point. Top. End point. Bottom. Great job so far. Now, I will reformat this code and make it easy to read for you. And. That's it. We have just learned how to add gradient colors with the foreground style modifier to any text view in Swift UI. How cool is that? Now we are going to embed this text view into a new VStack container. Please follow me. VStack. The end of the header. This vertical stack view makes the header's main container, and we will add the rest of the design elements to it. Go ahead and let's add a new text view after the first one. Text Fun and enjoyable outdoor activity for friends and families. Now we will add some modifiers to it. Enter this code. Multiline text alignment. Leading. Italic. Foreground color. Custom, gray, medium. Awesome. Now we need to align the title to the left so that we can make space for the button. First, let's tell this VStack the desired direction of how it must align all the subviews inside it. Go ahead to the VStack and enter this new property. Alignment. Dot. Leading. As you can notice on the preview, the title was aligned to the left side of the container. How cool is that? Now we just need to improve the design somewhat by adding some inner padding to it. Let's add a new modifier to the header. Enter this code. Padding. Horizontal. 30. This code gives the header some space. Awesome. After that, please go to the header's title and embed it into a new horizontal stack container as I show you. H stack. Great. Now, it's time to add a new button to this header. Header button. Enter the following code inside the horizontal stack container and after the title view. Button. Label. Text. Button. With this short code, we've just added a new button to the header. Now let's add a new comment to the action part of it. Enter this code. New comment. 
Action. Show a sheet. Print. The button was pressed. This is the place where we will trigger some action when a user presses the button. For now, we will only print out a message about this action with this useful function in the console. Please go ahead and press the button in the preview. After doing that, you should see the message in the debug area, as I show you. You can activate the debug area and the console at the bottom right part of Xcode. So when we press the blue button, then a new message will be printed out in the console. Later on, in the upcoming lessons, we will further improve the functionality of this button when we discuss how presentation sheets work in iOS. But before doing that, we need to work urgently on this design. As you can see in the preview, this is a very simple button. Simply put it, the default button's color is weird, and its appearance does not match the overall app design. In the rest of this tutorial, we are going to create a custom button with a better design to make this header really eye-catchy. Are you ready for that? I hope so. Button design. First of all, we need to create a new SwiftUI file in the component folder, so let's do it. Name this file custom button view and save it. Cool. Now let's replace the placeholder text view with this code. Z stack. Circle. Fill. Linear gradient. Colors. White. Comma. Custom, green, light. Comma. Custom, green, medium. Start point. Top. End point. Bottom. This code creates a circle with a nice linear gradient color. Now to get a better picture of how this layout works, we need to change the preview with some specific modifiers. That's why please go to the preview and add this code to the custom bottom view. Preview layout. Size that fits. Padding. After that, we need to change the live preview to selectable at the bottom of the preview window, as I show you. As you notice, the look of the preview has changed. With this, we can focus on designing the custom button. Next. Let's add a stroke to this circle. All right. Enter this code after the fill modifier. Stroke. Line width. 4. This code should add a stroke to the circle, yet it does not work at all. Moreover, it generates an error message telling us that a view could not have a stroke. This behavior differs from what we want, and the problem is in the Swift UI framework. Unfortunately, for some strange reason, we cannot simultaneously apply the fill modifier with the stroke modifier on a Swift UI view. It is what it is. To solve this weird problem, we need to create a new circle without the fill modifier so we can add the stroke to this layout. That being said, let's separate the stroke modifier with a new circle, as I show you. First, the new circle, then it follows the stroke modifier. So far, so good. Now let's continue developing the custom button design with this new stroke property. Enter this code. Linear gradient. Colors. Custom, gray, light. Custom, gray, medium. Start point. Top. End point. Bottom. Comma. This new modifier will add a nice linear gradient to the stroke, which is quite cool. Now, I will reformat this code and make it easy to read for you. After that, go ahead and add a new modifier to the Z stack. Enter this code. Frame. Width. 58. Height. 58. This modifier adds some constraints to the circle size. Finally, we can add an icon on top of these circles. Enter this code after the second circle. Image. System name. A colon. Then enter two double quotes. I'm pausing for a second to tell you that we won't insert an icon from the asset catalog. Instead, we are going to insert an image from the built-in symbols library. 
And to make it happen, we will use a not very known feature of Xcode. Please navigate to the top toolbar and click on the big plus button as I show you. This will show up the library panel on top of the editor. Here, we can see a bunch of options on the horizontal menu bar. You can see the following libraries, which are available for our immediate use. The first one is the views library, then there are the modifiers, the snippets, the media, the color, and finally, the symbols libraries. Here, our goal is to search for an icon so then we can insert its name into the double quotes. After selecting the symbol library, please click on the search bar and enter the hiking word as I show you. Now, if we click the figure hiking symbol, then Xcode will insert the symbol's name into the double quotes. How fantastic is that? Thousands of symbols are ready for use with this cool Xcode feature. After that, we just need to add some new modifiers to the system image. Go ahead and enter this code. Font weight. Black. Font. System. Size. 30. Foreground style. Linear gradient. Colors. Custom, gray, light. Custom, gray, medium. Start point, top. End point, bottom. And there it goes. We have just finished creating the custom button. Now it's time to insert it into the header view. Please, go back to the card view and replace the text with this new button. Enter this code. Custom button view. Great. It's almost perfect. We just need to push this button to the header's right edge. And to do this, we need to insert a spacer between the title and the button. Enter. Spacer. Here it is. We can finally test our application in the simulator or on a real device since we have just finished developing the header section of the card. How cool is that? I hope you enjoyed the process of how we incrementally progressed in developing this card component. And guess what? We won't stop here since we will continue creating a well-stylized interactive button for the footer section in the next lesson. Until then, happy coding!